My name is uh, Julia Janberg and uh, I'm a curator based in uh, Malmö, Sweden. Uh, and I am very happy to be here today with you, Christian. Uh, it's nice to see you. You too. <laughs> and uh, we're here today to contribute a small discussion of your work and especially um, your ongoing exhibition uh, at Patricia Fleming Gallery in Glasgow. And um, just for a short introduction for people watching, I thought we just mention the title of the exhibition, uh, the drum, the chime, the scrape, the splash, the jerk. Mm -hmm. uh, and it presents both new works and uh, works produced uh, while you were on a residency in Hong Kong mm -hmm. uh, uh, prior to the pandemic, right? Yeah. Um, so I just wanted to you know, invite you into our conversation by asking if you could say a few words uh, on the title of the exhibition as well as just a short introduction to it. Okay, um, well the title, well I'll, yeah I'll start with the title. Um, the title is in reference to a piece of text that I wrote that is in the exhibition that I have concurrently in Edinburgh. So there's a, there's a newspaper that has a piece of text that people will be able to take home with them. And in that text, uh, just to give you like a bit of sort of uh, context, there's, a, there's, there's two lines in this section that's sort of written in a kind of verse form. And uh, the character is describing kind of the components of working in a fictional futuristic carpet factory. And, mm. uh, and so they, they start listing things. They say the cloth, on the yarn, the shipping, the clientele. And then they write next to that, the drum, the chime, the scrape, the splash, the jerk. It's to mm. create a kind of mirror image of them in their little sort of cynical wow. bubble. They're kind of created for themselves as they kind of speak in kind of an in, in sort of interior monologue to themselves. So, in, wow. as, a, as a kind of build up to some sort of like, you know, desired revolution of sorts, you know. With mm. By, 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 by subverting um, decorative carpets that they're working, you know, in a factory and just changing things a little bit at a time to, you know, sort of gain back some kind of uh, position, the agency. Mm -hmm. so. And perhaps we should mention that um, you're also exhibiting at Collective in Edinburgh, that exhibition that you were just referring to. Yeah, so, yeah, like, with things, with elements like the title, the, the, they're both kind of, they kind of interlock a little bit in that sense. I mean, they weren't done at the same time exactly. A, a little bit of overlap, but they're, 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 they're very relatable, so. Mm. And I guess in, in both these exhibition, you um, use this technique that I think you call improvised drawing, uh, but with uh, yarn instead of like a pen yeah. um, and just to expand a bit on this introduction could you talk a little bit about how these works are made um yeah so, i mean generally i think when i go to make the the tufted works i don't i don't have a plan i i kind of know the only plan is i'm just going to show up and keep my yarn uh, shelves well stocked so I have choices but other than that mm -hmm. just um, start on something you know like like automatic drawing you know you just you just start scribbling on the on a page and things start to sort of gravitate to each other and then you start to build on things and suddenly you have a kind of story going on um, mm. so it starts off with that and then things start to kind of congeal and turn into things and then things start to sort of um, inspire other connections with other work, other pieces of writing, uh, you know, it, it, it sort of, it, it starts to sort of create an orbit eventually. Mm. So. so the, the cloth is um, somehow the, the format that is, that you start off with and then you fill that, or do you also add? Uh... No, I, I don't add any other materials, basically. Mm -hmm. um, I want, I want some, because it's sort of an obscure tool and technique, I, 
I need to leave a certain, I feel like I want to leave a certain level of legibility to what the tool is designed to do, like mm -hmm. some, some trace of, of, of its sort of industrial uh, carpet, you know, kind of nature still there. Like um, if I, I mean, I, I know that's still kind of there no matter what I do because I'm using wool and, you know, and stitches and stuff, but I think there's a part of me that wants to leave some pretty basic bones, you know, still, mm. you know, I have one foot in the, this world and one foot kind of wandering off, you know, into this other zone, you know, of just trying things out and playing, mm. exper being experimental, but to sort of watch this, to watch that thing kind of leave the orbit a little bit. Yeah. So. So uh, you and I, we we um, we haven't actually met in person yet. No. Uh, that is yet to come. But uh, we came in contact with one another uh, through our shared interest in uh, the artist Hanna mm -hmm. uh, who's a Swedish Norwegian artist um, whose large scale tapestries were like demonstrating her impassion, the impassionated responses to the social social political events of her time. And uh, she dealt with a range of issues from the rise of fascism to the Nazi occupation of her country, Norway, and uh, also including its uh, impact on her own family at the post-war growth of nuclear power and the media coverage of the Vietnam War and so forth. And um, I just thought it was interesting because she um, had a background in painting and then moved on to the loom and yarn as her main material and mm. uh, as her preferred media. And she also talked a lot about that there were things that she couldn't express in painting that she could with the loom and with her tapestries. Uh, so I just saw this link to, to what you're talking about in your um, yarn drawing or mm. however you want to describe it. Um, do, do you agree uh, of this or? Um... I mean, yeah, I mean, I was, I wrote some, some notes before I got here and I wrote some, some little phrases down to kind of give myself a, a response to that. I, I was thinking about that Hannah Riggan stuff. I was looking at the book. Mm. Oh yeah. <laughs> and um, I don't know, for me, I don't, I, I don't know how well my version of that lines up with hers, but I mean, textiles, um, they keep you kind of firmly planted in the real world in a, in a way mm. like painting is, painting is not as accessible to, in, a, in, a lot, in a lot of ways, maybe. I mean, obviously textiles aren't either, you know, especially if you're talking about industrial formats where like you just imagine a big giant building where stuff comes out of it, you know? Mm. And, and but but I think generally speaking, um, there's also just I mean I think for Hannah Riggan she didn't use like cartoons and things like that, so she was sort of and it, it's a very you know specific way of thinking to construct yeah. to construct an image or an object the way she was doing it with, with weaving. I mean I don't really know much about weaving. Um, other than I know it sort of, it's not the same sort of intuitive, it's not mark making, you know, it's no. sort of image construction uh, uh, or, you know, consti constituting an image from some other kind of angle. But I still think, I, I, I sort of feel that using, I mean, drawing is there, drawing, drawing doesn't mm. have paper and pencils on the no. way. So, uh, I think for me, you're, you're able to sort of piggyback on a lot of other con like kinds of content and, and textiles is another like vast and open terrain where you can, you can kind of sit next to a lot of important issues without explicitly sort of um, invoking them. Um, mm. But they're kind of there and the tension is there and the electricity is kind of there as well. Um, so I think that is, it, I think there's a level of accessibility with, with them that I think other users, when they come and see this, they maybe they're kind of um, a bit confused as to what kind of process it is, but it's a familiar thing. They're looking at something that they know very, very, very well. So Yeah. 
And I think also it's very interesting with this border between art and crafts and like how, I mean, it's, it's a discussion that's been going on for, for ages, but still it's, it's very relevant. And I think your work really heightened, heightened that. Mm. Um, and uh, I will leave Regan very, very shortly, but I just also uh, find that her use of color and the, the directness and brutality somehow of her work it's also something that I uh, sense in your work, uh, which is very um, interesting for me. And uh, also the um, the actual human hands, or like like you say, uh, if there is a factory and there are things just coming out of it, it, it of course that's that's not happening. There are people involved and uh, in making all these. Um, <laughs> I think that's sort of the core for me is, is, is the reminder that there are like bodies like involved yeah. in the process, um, whether it's mine or whether it's using me, my, my little version of it to, you know, um, provide a, a level of, you know, object awareness, I guess, to, to how things work in the world, and, uh, the way, you know, what people have to do in order to make things that seem kind of, alien to most people's, you know, concept, yeah. you know, their concept of how, like, I, I don't know what goes into a phone specifically. But, mm. And I think it, there's a, there's a lot of very, I don't want to say interesting, but like, you know, maybe harrowing or, or complicated stories as to how the phone becomes a phone, you know, so yeah. I think textiles is sort of like the prototypical kind of industry for that kind of consideration. Definitely. All this fast fashion and so forth. Mm. Um, but so somehow I also see uh, performativity and like uh, choreography somehow in your work. And perhaps that's also with your writing and uh, like adding or heightening the, the body <laughs> in, in all of it. Um, and uh, I was also going to bring in that you're also undertaking a PhD at the moment, right, at the Contemporary Art Research Center in, at Kingston University. Mm -hmm. um, and if I understand it correctly, it's about an articulating craft methodologies beyond ornament and skill in contemporary art practices. Well, that, uh, that of course, that's very that interwoven. Title. It, has a new, okay. it, has, it has a new, much more direct title. Tell, like, tell me more. Okay, that was the old title that the, the, web, that the university kind of left up there. I think. <laughs> if they're watching. Um, <laughs> but it's, it, 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 this project kind of came out of a more a, a broader, like, topic about art, you know, art, um, art sort of, uh, using a sort of craft techniques in a, with a kind of art angle or whatever, but I, I had a hard time articulating it like I am now. But like, it's now called uh, Drawing with Carpet, Tufting Gun oh. as Mark Making Tools. Yeah. And it's essentially, like, it's a two part thing. It's a bunch of, well, it's a bunch of works, like tufted works like are in, that are in the exhibitions. And then um, uh, a sort of, um, a version of the newspaper that I have in Edinburgh mm. and um, but a much bigger one and it's a sort of diary it's a it's a sort of field notes they're bits of kind of fiction writing and lots of things sort of you know trying to sort of get around using the sort of tufting gun as a kind of central like core and mm. having lots of access points in lots of different ways partially because I'm not a trained textile artist or craftsperson. Um, I, I only know how to sort of, you know, like describe something with my eyes closed and, you know, you sort of feeling around it. And so that's kind of what the whole project is, is using the, the gun as a kind of, um, a kind of pivot point to talk about a lot of other things. You kind of move yeah. around, it changes kind of, so there's, there's there's discussions about me or like there's like sort of journal entries describing experiences of being in the residency in Hong Kong during the 2019 sort of pro democracy protests 
moment and how that um how just how how that happening that that being kind of going on in the background like how everything that you're doing has a has a relationship to what you might be doing in the studio on some level like it has some sort of effect or some sort yeah. of ambient uh influence or something so the phd is sort of a compiled version of how all of that kind of siphons down and, and not it's not that the tufting process is like the final iteration it's so it's a sort of it's the, it's the sort of object sort of it's a sort of immovable point within a kind of larger universe and things are having to go through it or go around it and it's sort of uh, it's sort of uh, it's just sort of recording that process in a way. Mm. So it becomes and, more about process and uh, like practice than it does yeah. specifically textiles. Mm. Um, and I thought we could um, uh, go a little bit deeper into uh, your exhibition and um, related to Hong Kong and your residency there. Um, you created the work HSBC. Um, that of course shares its title with the British Multinational Investment Bank. That's uh, you know repeatedly been <laughs> fined for money laundering and yeah. sometimes uh, in relation to organized crimes and mm. crime and terrorist organizations such as Al Qaeda and um, the um, yeah the initials are of course the Hong Kong and Shanghai Banking Corporation. So it's, uh, all, it's just a bank at the end of the day. So it has problems, yeah. inherent problems anyway. So. Of course, but uh, and and the, and your work um, that was just a small <laughs> adding to it. Uh, it hangs from the ceiling just by the entrance of the the gallery, and um, in a sort of a confronting way, or perhaps a bit like a portal. Um, and. Um, would you like to talk a little bit about the work, the pattern, technique, and also? Yeah, I mean, um, I mean that's a maybe a, a good example of like being in quite a specific place um, at a very specific time, like, and uh, not knowing, sort of not knowing how to sort of um, articulate, like, or or if I should articulate, like what's going on or like, well, you know, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm writing a lot of things as well, but I'm also like thinking is, is there some way that all of this information can be kind of, will be or can be kind of siphoned into the, to the, to these larger textile as a, cause I mean, cause Hong Kong is a very specific, the sort of, um, it's specific to the tough thing then because it was invented in Hong Kong for one thing. Mm. It's sort of, it it was invented in the 50s when uh like a lot of uh, people were coming over for work from mainland china as during like just after the communist revolution and now a lot of that work has gone the other way like the the, the manufacturing work is now back in the mainland and now the kind of the sort of market the sort of marketing end is is of the company that invented it and a lot of companies like it are now you know still based in hong kong but um I don't know, like using, I used a lot of HSBC logos, mm -hmm. uh, mainly as an aside in a way, because it, it was, it was, I, I tried a lot of things before that. I was just drawing and drawing and drawing and things started to sort of pile up and, and they're kind of into being sort of formal decisions on, on some level. And it was almost like, uh, how do I like put a stamp on it that, that reminds me in a kind of diaristic way, like that I was here in, in this place. Mm. Um, it's not exactly meant to be such a, a pointed gesture, but at the same time, you kind of know that it's going to be one way or the other. And, uh, and, and you know, what's interesting is, you know, it, yeah, like I, you know, I tried to use it as a repeat pattern to sort of kind of fold it back into kind of the decorative world. Mm. And, um, into you know it's it's like a two different very two, two very different worlds of like very innocuous kind of symbols you know where one mm. 
one is maybe flowers and birds and you know things like that and then the other one is this corporate logo mm. you know geometric shape or whatever and then but it has so, it has so yeah. much more meaning or not mean maybe not meaning but it, it means so much more in a very very different way and um i know that those that that kind of experience isn't necessarily going to be completely captured um it's in one in one textile you know it needs like unlike the riggin uh works mm. it, it it's not narr narrative driven the maybe the, the the practice is trying to kind of build up a narrative of, of you know of small mm. a much smaller part um and that's what the the newspaper and the and the, the stuff i'm doing for the phd like that's yeah. sort of com compile those those mm. but, uh yeah, with with Riggin, it's it's a much more like, you know, here's this person. They have a name. Yeah. They were a real person. They were, you know, they were, in, you know, put in a camp. Of, you, know, you know, this and that. And there's the whole narrative of mm. that scene. Uh, whereas this is, you know, it, it is kind of just is superimposed onto this sort of uh, messy, yeah, noisy kind of uh, uh, overlay of lots of different drawings i mean at one point there were two what it was it was just made up of two big watermelons mm. at one point it was just little squiggles and it had little uh like fish scales and it was like trying motifs on and trying different images from things that i have been drawing or things i've seen while i was in you know while i was in hong kong mm. uh, and then i mean a lot of the writing that came off the back of that is more maybe reflective of how that process sort of interfaces with like the, the the sort of desire like should i go into the street and sort of stand in solidarity with people because mm. state violence and police violence is, is quite a ubiquitous problem throughout the world so like you know there are some certain issue, issues there that most people can kind of stand alongside with yeah oh, but it's very interesting that it's um the HSBC logo or somehow gets flattened out. <laughs> it doesn't mean anything. Like you say, at the end of the day, it's just a bank and it's perhaps comparable to a raspberry, which is um, depicted in one of um, the other works exhibited. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, it's also the media landscape where we're, and the world we live in. It's very, yeah. I mean, Again, compared to Riggen, they had, you know, one newspaper and one radio station, and that was it, and that... Yeah, yeah. So process the same information. Yeah. So that's definitely something <laughs> that's shifting yeah. a lot. I mean, I guess that's part of it, is like putting it on there, knowing that it's going to be a pretty flaccid symbol when I, when I use it, like when I specifically mm. use it, whereas actually it's not a flaccid symbol at all, like in the real world, like when I mm. use it, it's a raspberry. Mm. <laughs> when I use it, it's a butterfly or, a, or, a, or a seashell, whatever. Um, and that sort of neutralizing, like is part of, I think a process of trying to understand, like it's, it's that desire to want to make your like this, your your artwork or whatever reflects some part of your your sort of whole being in some sense or like your your, your political how you're politically minded or socially minded or whatever and knowing that it's just not always going to do the job it in fact it's probably hardly ever going to do the job so mm. you, you know i think um that one needs to just put the paintbrush down or the tufting gun and, and then just go out into the street. And like, that is, that is the gesture that is appropriate. And so mm, mm. You, when I was using the sort of HSBC, it's like, this is a really inappropriate in political engagement or a really, you know, uh, weak one. Mm. Um, because it's not, as, it's not, it's still, I understand that at the end of the day, what I'm doing is not still that accessible, even though, part of the whole project that I'm working on is like how to make something that's, you know, pure, you know, pure and abstract, sort of abstract on some level and just in, like the, the, the sort of, mm. the sort of joy of drawing, really, but that has this other stuff that it's keeping this other stuff in mind and, you know, these other processes. But at the end of the day, 
making that legible is a very, very hard thing to do. Yeah. But it's also interesting that, I mean, I mentioned, or I'm, I'm experiencing myself that it's, of course, easiest to talk about the non-abstract things, the <laughs> things that are um, the title, the raspberry, but your aspirate, <laughs> as abstract elements are very uh, much there as well. Mm. Uh, but I'm, I'm just um, wanted to go back to um, something you mentioned before about your process and uh, like a notebook or keeping, you no know, field notes uh, in the uh, in the exhibition. There are two works uh, called HK nineteen one and two. Uh, that you also produced while uh, whilst on this residency, and uh, in the exhibition text they are described as acting as a kind of this notebook or diary, uh, and I find that very interesting too, uh, and also generous for the audience to include these and also inviting us to to your process. Um, do you, do you all often work like that, or or I mean? It's also interesting to how you relate to your artistic choices and decision making through mm. they are heightened somehow, like these are important because they lead to something else. Um, yeah, I mean, I think that's that's the thing. I, I, I have an, I have another note in my little notebook here that I wrote in, in preparation for this. And it, it, it was basically telling me to tell you um, that I, well, that I treat, tried to treat everything field note <laughs> as much as I can, you know, obviously mm. some things get away from you and, you know, um, either, in, either in terms of context or someone actually buys something you made and it, it literally, is, you know, it's not there anymore. But I think, yeah, it's a, to treat things. So like those, so those drums, for instance, they're not meant, they weren't initially meant to be exhibited um, mm. uh, because I didn't, uh really know how I felt about them like how, how necessary they needed to be next to these other works that were kind of doing a lot of the same things that maybe painting like they were doing I, the paintings don't do the things that the other works do even though they, mm. they have a lot of similarities in a lot of ways um but what the paintings the little what the little paintings do do and they're always you know about a five or eight even even smaller sometimes but um, mm. but they 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 do act as a kind of exercise um like i i would do so doing the tough thing is actually after a while you get kind of tired and like fati like physically fatigued from doing it uh so i would just you know you know when i was in hong kong i would i had a table and i had the tufting frame and I'd do the tufting until I kind of got tired or bored or whatever. And then I'd go and sit down and just move paint around for a while. Mm. It it never meant that I drew, I, I took something from there and put it into the tech, to the tufting work, tufted works. It just, it was just something to kind of keep the muscles moving in a way. Like while I, while my other, while my actual muscles were, mm. were, were chilling out and, um, so like for me, they're, they're just sort of, uh, you, you work on them and you work on them until you can't work, until you find some kind of um, comfortable stopping point. And so they, yeah. they just sort of mark time or uh, keep, keep an active, kind of a level of activity going. They're, they're a kind of interval mm. most of the time. Um, uh, and yeah, I mean, I just like doing it. At the end of the day, this a lot of what comes down to a lot of the stuff I like to do it, or that I'm doing is because I like to draw, and it's, mm. it kind of boils down to that. And so um, they're they're just drawings for the sake of drawings. But then uh, I got roped into uh, but <laughs> so. <laughs> but I, I mean, I like all I like them, and those those, those yeah. are my two favorite ones. Um, so I am treating them with like they are. There's a sort of there are better and you know there are the crappy ones that I won't even mm -hmm. show anybody, and then there are the nicer ones. But um, yeah, I mean, for for those were the ones I did in Hong Kong. But for a while, I was just drawing like flowers and 
and and and plants and things i was thinking i could build up a print design portfolio and so i just drew flowers for like you know a couple of months when I, when, I, when i was at home and um it you know it was meant for something but at the end of the day it was just really nice with the with the, the markers or the, the brushes that i had it was just sort of nice to make the marks mm. and to see something at, come out of nothing so i don't know it's um yeah that's what those are <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh talking about stopping points. <laughs> I see that we have by far extended our <laughs> I have so much more to ask you and uh but I guess we will have to continue our conversation. Yeah. Uh, at another time. Yeah, we can dig into the rigging stuff. I I I I love that stuff. And also I I'm really looking forward to seeing you and your work in in person. Uh eventually yeah. post pandemic. Yes. <laughs> and um I was going to mention that uh, your exhibition in Glasgow is uh it, it's still ongoing it ends this Saturday mm -hmm. uh but your show in at Collective in Edinburgh is open now and until the end of August. Yeah. Um so everyone that has an opportunity go go see it. Yeah. Please. And uh, <laughs> Take care Christian. All right, you too Julia. Okay, bye. Yeah, bye bye.